Come, Nerevar, come. Look upon the plot holes of Skyrim quests. They have even more holes than Sheogorath's cheese. Today, we will be focusing on the plot holes of the Skyrim Dark Brotherhood quest line, which, under close inspection, is a poor attempt at creating intrigue. With lackluster, incompetent assassins and an internal conflict created by Astrid that really does not make any sense. It makes me question if Astrid was intended to be an idiot, or is it the writing that makes her that way? It is Emil Pagliarulo we are talking about, the M. Night Shyamalan of Elder Scrolls writing. Some characters are unrealistically idiotic. Astrid would not be leading the Dark Brotherhood if she was as dumb as she is portrayed to be. Consider this my creative writing workshop for Inwaz. Oh, and no, Todd, it's just works is not an instrument. First, joining the Dark Brotherhood is a very big ordeal that has quite a bit of unanswered questions, and it was executed poorly, in my divine opinion. Let's first start with the positives. Putting an end to Grelid the Kind was quite the satisfying experience. Even without the Dark Brotherhood quest, that old Enwa hag had it coming. That is where the positives end. After completing the contract, by listening to that Aventus Arantino mongrel dog of the Empire child, the Dragonborn gets kidnapped. Aventus had been performing the Black Sacrament often enough, and for long enough that the entire province knew about it. But no one from the Brotherhood had even been over. But once the Dragonborn does it, that's it, he gets kidnapped. Nerevar, I understand this in the first stages of the game, but it does not make any sense for Astrid to kidnap the Dragonborn. Especially if we consider the fact that he is some muscular Nord Enwa, sleeping in his metal armor that needs to be dragged from Riften or Windhelm all the way to Morthal in one day. Logistics of transporting the Dragonborn aside, you are then greeted by Astrid, who has come alone without any backup, with three other kidnapped Enwas, one of which is a farm tool. One of them has a contract on their head. Now here is where Emil Pagarucho shines the best. Any one of them could have a contract on their heads, or all of them could have a contract on their heads. But you will never know because Astrid remains cryptic about your choice. What was the point of this idiotic test anyway, if you were not going to tell us which one of them had a contract? But you're going to say, but Lord Dagoth, it does not matter which one of them has a contract. She was just testing if you can do her bidding. And to that I will say, for those in the back, there was no need to add the mystery element to this particular quest. It is completely useless. I mean, there are theories that Astrid was the real contract, but real and not real contracts without the Night Mother do not even make sense or have any legitimacy, Nerevar. Now the Dragonborn could just choose to end Astrid and side with the mongrel dogs of the Empire to destroy the Dark Brotherhood, which admittedly is more of a straightforward plot hole process where the Dragonborn goes in and destroys the Brotherhood and gets out. It solves the mysterious Dark Brotherhood attacks on the Dragonborn, which completely negate the purpose of them wanting the Dragonborn to join. He is more of a liability than he is a help to Astrid, and if she is able to kidnap him, she is more capable of just killing him right on the spot instead. You know this Enwa will assert dominance once you bring him to the organization. Your authority will be challenged, but who cares about these small details? It does not get much better if the Dragonborn chooses to join the Dark Brotherhood. In fact, the plot deteriorates significantly. We have arrived at the second cluster of plot holes. They send the Dragonborn to work for Nazir, who might be Nazim's long-lost cousin. Now, before killing the Emperor of the Mongrel Dogs of the Empire, Ayla Mythic Dawn, the Dragonborn has to do these 
fake ragtag missions that are arguably not even legitimate because they did not go through the Night Mother. Mostly from Nazir, and only one, just one, from Astrid. At least two or three Astrid quests would have been fine, but most of the pre-Night Mother contracts lack intrigue. Muri, Elaine, Dufont, and Nielsen's Shattershield affair sounds like a watered-down Skyrim soap opera, apparently. Muri was close with the Shattershields, but due to Dufont's banditism and Inwa behavior, they disowned her. All right, that's it? A lover's squabble is all we get? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. We are not given much context for these missions. I mean, I understand not everything has to be spoon-fed. Still, I suspect that Emil Pagliaccio did not want to spend much effort into giving characters more backgrounds like he did with the Oblivion Dark Brotherhood questline, which is its own convoluted mess. And you might ask Lord Dagoth, why are you so critical of Skyrim, even though you play it religiously? What a fickle god you are. To that, I will say the Enwa named Zake plays Skyrim religiously. I, Dagoth Ur, am a Morrowind purist. To honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned, please subscribe to my sermons, raise your thumbs, and write more plot holes on the parchment below. The third cluster of plot holes starts with the arrival of the Night Mother, now we get to the most annoying mongrel dog of the Empire, Cicero. Look, Nerevar, I understand that the whole crazy act goes deeper with this man. And everything he does could be explained as, ooh, he is crazy. And he is the true representation of the Dark Brotherhood, simultaneously. While I see what Emil Paganini tried to do here, in my divine opinion, it does not work, Nerevar. Instead of attacking Astrid, he opts to attack Vizara, a simple farm tool. If anyone dares to question this attack, it can be explained away simply by his insanity and is done purely to prolong the quest. Also, he completely abandoned the Night Mother with a bunch of heretics. What kind of keeper is he? After protecting the Night Mother with his life, he just leaves her? He could have taken her to the Dawnstar Sanctuary and started his own branch. But no, let's explain his irrational decisions with insanity, even though he has been shown time and time again to make rational decisions. This forces the only person who is actually not a heretic in the Dark Brotherhood, the Dragonborn, who is literally the listener to make a lackluster game of to kill or to spare with him. Yes, Cicero is insane, but not insane enough to leave the Night Mother and enrage the listener. Honestly, him trying to communicate through his journals is a horrible idea, considering the fact that the Dragonborn is an Enwa Nord Himbo who probably does not know how to read. We arrive at the fourth cluster of plot holes, and that has everything to do with Emperor Titus Mide, the second assassination preparation, which I am usually for, but this was poorly executed and is the worst display of how the writing of different quest lines barely overlapped with each other in Skyrim. It is like the writers did not communicate while writing the Civil War and the Dark Brotherhood quests. Oh, if only the lead designer had design documents. Is this how he honors the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned? I'm going to rage. I am going to lose it, Nerevar. Oh, there he goes. Breathe in, breathe out, Lord Lord Dago. 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 Let the anger go. Moving on. First, the Dragonborn meets with Breton Enwa Amond Motiere. It is a callback to Pagaluigi's old Motiere quest. He has to disrupt the mongrel dog wedding of Vittoria Vici in order to get the Emperor's attention, which is uh, strange. Then the Dragonborn has to make Commander Maro's son swim with the fishes to make the situation even more dire. Why would the Emperor show up in a province where there is a civil war and a crazy maniac on the loose? 
He shows up even when the storm clocks have taken over solitude with the petulant oculatus protecting him in solitude. How does that even make sense? You have to come up with oh Elisif just let them theory at best. And why Elisif would be joining Torig and Sovngarde if she let the Imperials back in. The war did not end, and I am very much sure those Enwa Stormcloaks are ready to destroy the Kataria and the body double of the mongrel dog Emperor at the moment's notice. Emil Paganocci thought he could North Korean guided tour his way out of this, expecting most Dragonborns to complete the Dark Brotherhood quest before invading solitude with the Stormcloaks. Did the Emperor have a death wish? Oh, I guess he did, but who would go through these lengths of sailing to Skyrim if they wanted to get Uriel's septum? There was no need for a body double or anything, honestly. There was no need to bring another assassin on the ship. Finally, we have Astrid's betrayal, and the destruction of the Sanctuary, and the ambush of the Dragonborn, the listener chosen by the Night Mother, and very much loyal Dark Brotherhood member. I mean, sure, she did get jealous of the Night Mother and saw it as a challenge to her power. But even Astrid does not seem to be stupid enough to mess with the bad juju that Sithis and the Void entail. I mean, sure, they did not have the Night Mother, but they had the Spectral Assassin and Shadowmere showcasing the power of Sithis. Now that being said, she is an assassin with a loyal family following her which can get to her head. A lot of the Dark Brotherhood members express their loyalty to her, which includes the likes of Festus Crex, Gabriella, Babette, and others. Let's not forget her half-farm tool, half-Nord Enwa husband Arnbjorn, who is the equivalent of a Twitch streamer's husband, while the Dragonborn endlessly simps for her. With Astrid's body count being in the dozens, do you really think contacting the mongrel dog of the Empire and Commander Morrow, whose son you just disposed of, is a good idea? And why, you earned yourself hundreds of life sentences and dozens of executions, and you expect to get a plea deal. What was her endgame here? Look, Nerevar, she faces the same problem as Cicero. Her behavior can be explained away as irrational and idiotic, but that does not make any sense for good writing. Oh, look, a lackluster attempt at symbolism. She becomes the Black Sacrament and mantles the Night Mother with her betrayal. She was too dense to realize that her actions were a danger to herself and others until she was charred beyond recognition. People this dense usually don't change their minds at the end of their lives. They don't have time for Dark Brotherhood theology. They would be begging you for healing magic or sweet release of the void. Is this how Emil Papugayo honors the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned? The only other thing that Astrid did wrong was write Pippi Longstocking. Well, Nerevar, this is it for this sermon. Up next is the College of Winterhold plot holes, which are heavily inspired by Harry Potter. Honor the Sixth House and the Tribe unmourned by subscribing to my sermons, raising your thumbs, and writing on the parchment about the plot holes you have noticed down below. I would like to thank all Sixth House members and patrons, the adoring fan, Connor Runda, as well as the current Charmats of the Earth Realm, Dane Schneider and Tanya Davis.